Where There Is Smoke, a sound story produced by Coral Sapone Borsum. The day before, we went blackberry picking, my mom, my brother, and I, at Amazon Park. It's kind of between my dad's house and my mom's house, a bit to the side, out of the way. But right by the river, there are so many blackberries, multiple bushes side by side. Berry picking is one of the most satisfying activities. My mom was surprised that my brother Rafi even agreed to go, because at that point he was spending almost all of his time at my dad's house. He agreed to go blackberry picking because one of the housemates at my dad's was wanting to make blackberry jam. And of course, to do that, you need people to go out and pick fresh blackberries. We picked blackberries for most of the day. It was really, really fun. I don't remember what the blackberry jam tasted like. Sorry. When I was talking on the phone with my mom, she described that day as the last happy moment we had for a long time. The fire happened on August 5th, 2015. We left around noon or shortly after to go to the garden. Garden lunches start around noon. That was in the time when both my mom and I had a problem being constantly late to everything. It's just hard to get out the door, especially when you're leaving with bikes. It's in the outskirts of Eugene, so it takes a while to bike there if you're just biking there. But thankfully, the buses have a bike rack on the front that folds out and can hold three bikes. So if you're lucky and there's room, you can take your bikes on the bus, and that can speed up the journey by a lot. We did that on our way to Grassroots Garden. My mom heard from one of the bus drivers that there was a fire going on somewhere on the 24 bus line but she thought it was at 24th and Willamette or thereabouts, a good few blocks away from our house. We didn't think it was literally less than a block away. We couldn't have imagined that. We got there in time for at least some of lunch. We must have learned at some point after leaving Grassroots Garden on the way back home to our apartment that the fire was a lot closer because we stopped downtown at Eugene Public Library. We were there for a while. It was quiet inside, away from all the smoke. It was a comfortable place. We spent a long time in Eugene Public Library, but we did eventually head back. We detoured through Amazon Park, where we'd gone blackberry picking the day before. We actually walked right past those blackberry bushes next to the river and across from the skate park. We're approaching our home from that angle. And it is so smoky. I don't necessarily have the words to describe it. We didn't see the fire, of course, but it was a bad enough fire that South Town Lane's bowling alley where it happened, the roof fell in. So making our way back home through Amazon Park was stressful. It was a lot and I was tired and I think it was a little scary. If I'm being honest with myself, it was scary. We got back into the apartment, which is on the second floor, a corner apartment. The windows that we left open were not the windows facing the bowling alley, but some on the other side, facing away from South Town, were open. The smoke in our apartment and in the area around our apartment, it lingered for weeks. But we finally got back to our apartment. We got inside. One of the clearest memories I have was that if you were standing in one corner of the apartment and you looked at the corner of the ceiling opposite you, you could not see the clear lines where they met in the corner. It was that smoky. And that's just stuck in my head because of how scary that was. When we got home, I said something along the lines of, I'm so glad that's over. She responded a little coldly. Obviously it's not over. She knew that it was a big thing that would have lasting impacts. She didn't realize, for me, 
I was really just relieved to be home, even though this event had upended our lives. Because after that night, we didn't really have anywhere to sleep at the apartment, so we slept there. Then the following night, we started sleeping at my mom's friend, Heather's house. It was nice there, but it was not home. We were sleeping in the basement mostly, which is not great. We stayed at Heather's house for 10 days, and then on the 16th, another of my mom's friends, Betsy, was leaving town and needed someone to house sit for her. So then we were at Betsy's for 11 days. But because of the smell inside the house, we slept in the backyard. One day, I went to a nearby park near Betsy's house, and I met some kids that I really clicked with. And at the end, I was sad because I knew I would never see them again, because it was a completely different neighborhood. There's a lot of sad, bittersweet moments in this. After 11 days at Betsy's, we went back to Heather's. September is the start of the Jewish High Holidays, and Heather's house was not really the best place to do that, because she's not Jewish. It was not a Jewish household. So my mom found someone to stay with where we could be in that environment more readily. Someone from our congregation named Glenn. We stayed at his house September 22nd and 23rd for Yom Kippur. The details of this are complicated and probably not worth going into, but my mom talked with Glenn and secured housing for us at his place, paying rent. Finally, a place to stay, a permanent home again, paying rent on one of his spare rooms. So, in total, it was a little under two months that we were comfy homeless. And by the end of September, all was right again in the world. From a bird's eye view, the tiredness, the lack of structure, all that uncertainty for the future, this is what gave me the strength to survive the pandemic.
Hey, are you awake? Mm, couldn't you have knocked? How do you knock on a tent? Touche. No shoes? What, do you think the crew leads are gonna catch us? I mean, I don't think the tunnels will look much different at night. You know, being tunnels and all. Come on, it's about the vibes, dude. Dark out, everyone else is asleep. It's just you and me. I mean, it's gonna be awesome. Nighttime echoes just hit different. All right. Are we going in, or...? Whoa, it's so dark. <laughs> Duh. So... I'm not really sure how to do this. What? Flirting, you know? What, you had a crush on me or something? Dude, why do you think I brought you out here? Just to check out some boring old fort? I was hoping for some action. Gross. Hey, babe. Don't be like that. Ugh, oh, it's always the nice ones, isn't it? Oh, well. You win some, you test some. Wait. What are you doing? <laughs> Mm-hmm.